Hello everyone, George here, and today we're finally going to dive into camera calibration. This is going to take a few videos to actually cover everything. And if you haven't already, go over to the OpenCV website and please try to read through the camera calibration with OpenCV document you see here. The idea behind this series, as well as this video, is to make this as easy as possible. So I'm going to step you through everything necessary to do camera calibration. So we're starting off from the last project where we had created and printed out Aruco markers. Hopefully you have also watched the prior video on camera calibration and have printed out your pattern.png file, which you can see here. At the end of the next several videos, the hope is for us to be able to do this. That is hold up our checkerboard, have OpenCV detect all these corners, and then of course create this pattern for us. We can do this in several different ways. We can do this live, we can do this with uh, pre-gathered images, or of course with a pre-recorded video. Your camera, or anyone's camera, has distortions in it. We need to come up with a way of describing that information. What you end up with is something that looks like this when you print it out to a text document. I'm going to let you know right now, it's recommended that you take at least 10 pictures. However, when I've done these projects, I've never quite gotten good camera calibration with as few as 10 images. Typically, I needed up to 50. Here's a series of 47 different images I actually took. So here you can see we're moving the calibration up and down all over the place. But most importantly, we're also rotating it and we're going to be moving it back and forward in the Z axis. If you don't give the camera a whole lot of Z information, you end up with a, let's just say, a very bad a very bad calibration. I think it's time for us to start coding some things. So first off, I hope you've already measured your checkerboard square size as well as any Aruco markers that you plan on using. We're going to be storing these in meters as constant values. You also need to of course record the uh, size of your checkerboard. So let's create a few constants for us. So let's do a constant float, whoops, constant float calibration square dimension is equal to, in my case I measured it and I have 0 0.01905 floating point value meters. Let's give ourselves a reminder. I'm going to do now another constant float and I'm going to write down my Aruco marker size based upon printing them out with my printer. Remember to measure these. This is ultimately the most important thing you can do Finally, we need that size. Let's do constant size, and I'm going to do chessboard dimensions is equal to a new size object, and that's 6 by 9. We first need to supply our program, or I should say camera calibration within OpenCV, information about the known board size. Now, we've already recorded the calibration square dimensions here, and we're going to use that to produce where we expect those markers to actually be. Just to be blatantly clear, we are telling OpenCV exactly where, in a perfect world, these line up, the distances between each point that we expect. Let's go ahead and jump into our function, which is going to create the known positions for our chessboard. So let's do void create known board positions. We're going to take in a few values here. The first thing is the size of our board size. Next up, we're going to do a float, and that's going to be the square edge length. That's the length of one side of the square. Since it's a square, all the sides are the same, so we only need it once. And then finally, we need a vector. And this vector is going to be populated with all the points that we calculate. Now, the points we calculate are going to be stored in a point 3F. That means we have an X, Y, and Z coordinate. But this is a flat plane, so all the Z coordinates are going to be zero. And let's do a reference to that, and now we'll call this corners. Great. So now let's jump in. We're going to do a double for loop. So let's do four, and let's right below that do another four. And just like with most double for loops, it's going to be an I, J, K kind of thing. So let's do int I is equal to zero. I is less than board size dot, and we're going to start with height not area, height. Thank you. And then of course, I++. And you probably guessed already that now we're going to do an int j is equal to i, and then, excuse me, j is equal to zero, then j is less than the board size dot width. And then of course, j++. Now we're going to push into our corners vector 
this vector that we, we will create and pass in to be populated, all of the calculated locations where we expect these things to be. So we're going to do corners dot push underscore back. And we're going to do, we're going to create a point 3F. Let's do J times our square edge length. And then we're going to do I times our square edge length. And finally, our Z value is always zero because it's a flat plane. This is, of course, creating the known positions. So we're going to be calling this function later on in our code. The next step is for us to actually extract from an image the chessboard corners that are being detected. For that, we're going to create another function. Void get chessboard corners. Chessboard corners is going to take in a few different objects. To get the chessboard corners, we're actually going to need all of the different images that we're working with. The idea behind this function is to find and potentially visualize for any chessboard corners. So the first thing we're going to do is pass in a vector of mad objects. We're going to call those images because that's what they are. The next thing we're going to do is we need to pass in a reference to a, a vector of vectors of points uh, 2f. The reason for this is these are the corners that are found on the two-dimensional image. Remember, I call them corners, but it's kind of the, it's really the intersection of the chessboard uh, locations. Let's do vector. And once again, another vector inside of that. And now it's going to be a point to F. And remember, this is a reference. And all found corners is what we're going to call this. So these are all of the corners that we find that get passed out from this function. And then finally, I'm going to add a bool option. And this is going to be called show results. The idea is we can toggle whether or not we want to show the results of us finding these as we move along. So as you might have guessed, since we have a vector of images, we're going to have to iterate over them. So let's do a for loop. We're going to use iterators for this one. So let's use a vector mat and colon colon iterator. Iter is going to be equal to the beginning dot begin while the iterator does not equal images.end, let's increment that iterator. Now we're going to need a buffer to actually hold all the uh, points that are found in the image if it, of course, detects them. So we're going to do a vector, and that's going to be holding inside of it a point 2f. Once again, it's point 2f because these are two-dimensional objects. We're looking at an image here. We're going to call the function find chessboard corners, which is going to do all the work for us, really, in terms of finding these, these intersections or these, these uh, points on the chessboard. And the great thing about it is it returns to us a bool object on whether or not it found this stuff. So let's do a bool found is equal to find chessboard corners. This takes a few values. We need to take the iterator and, of course, uh, pass that in. Next up, it's going to take the size. Well, in our case, that's 9 by 6, or we can use the variable. It's up to you. I really don't care. And then it takes point buffer, which is our temporary variable right here. That's going to store all that information that it extracts if it's able to find them. Now we need to pass in some flags. These are basically going to augment how we handle processing the image that we've passed in. In my case, we're going to use adaptive thresholding and we're going to also uh, calibrate and normalize the image. So you can see right here a great description of what these flags do. We can OR them together to do multiple things. So we're going to use adaptive thresholding to convert the image to black and white. And then, of course, we're going to normalize the image gamma. I found that these two work really well. And OR that with CV underscore calibration normalize image. Great. Now we'll know whether or not we found these checkerboards, so we need to work on that information. So if found, well, what are we going to do? We're going to push that information now onto our found corners, which we've passed in. So we'll do all found corners dot pushback our point buffer. And we're going to now also do a test if show results. We're going to push this thing out. Results. There we are. So we're going to call another function for us that makes our life really easy. It's called draw chessboard corners. It's going to take in the corners so far, 
and uh, draw them onto our image for us. All we need to do is pass it our iterator, our current one of course, and the size, and the size is 9 by 6. Next up, we're going to pass it that point buffer. Those are all the, the two-dimensional points it found. And then the last thing is, was the pattern found? Well, there you go. That's the value we decided to store from the previous one. We're going to do an IM show. And that's going to be, let's just call it looking for corners. Why not? And all we need to do is pass it our particular image, which is stored in our iterator. And then we're going to put a wait key down so that uh, our program does not terminate before it's done. And with that, this is how we extract uh, chessboard corners. That is the two-dimensional points from an image. In the next video, we're going to tackle actually working with this information. That is pulling in the camera information and then passing it to these functions we've created to begin real camera calibration. You know, if you enjoyed the video, give me a like. If you don't, not only dislike, but give me a comment on why so I can improve in the future. And if you want more content like this, please subscribe. I will see you all next time. Have a great night. So long, bye.